It's a nice cool and foggy morning here at the West End Gun Club. It is Saturday, April 2nd. Uh, it's been cool the past few days, but it's going to heat up again late next week or this upcoming week rather. It's going to be in the 90s apparently in Southern California. Uh, weird weather, you know, it's really, it gets cold and hot and cold and hot, but we deal with it. Anyway, I'm out here at the Rimfire Range and I'm just here to test something out. Be uh, I got something new in a couple days ago and if you follow my Instagram, you already know what it is. Uh, but I'm, it's gonna be a short range session, relatively short, uh, because the junior uh, shooters are gonna occupy this range, the Rimfire Range, right around 12 or so, because I think they're, right, they're up the hill on the shotgun range right now and so they have the Rimfire Range scheduled for the afternoons here on the first Saturday of the month. Um, anyway, I've already got my stuff set up, and actually, let's go ahead and go over to the bench, which uh, has what I'm testing out today. We have my lab radar set up, just for reference, but this is my CZ455, if you can see here, and on the muzzle is a tuner. It's the, I think it's called Kinetic Security Solutions Adaptive Tuning System. It's a... Uh, Basically, it's a barrel tuner. Uh, it's cut for these. It's got cut for these threads. Um, but we're going to go ahead and try this out today because, as of late, I have not been able to get to CZ455 to shoot like it used to. Um, you know, ammo lots being what they are, I have a lot of ammo of various lots of different brands, and it shoots okay, but not as stellar as I once had it shooting. So I'm going to go and try out a tuner. I'm indifferent towards tuners. I feel like they're just, ever since I first heard about them in the early 2000s from bench rest shooters, and I saw a bunch of the bench rest from fire shooters at my old club using these, I just felt like, I never, I looked at the results and I wasn't sure if they were getting anything. Maybe they were just doing it wrong. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to, I've been indifferent towards these. I know a lot of people have good success with tuners when they can't get lot tests done, like and buy a lot of the same lot and they're just subject to whatever the supply is, uh, that they've had good luck with tuners. So I'm gonna try this out and see how it goes. There's a certain procedure that the company has outlined on how to tune the tuner for your gun. Uh, it involves just shooting a couple, like several two shot groups, right? And see how close the group, the, you know, how tight the groups can get. Uh, two shot groups as you keep dialing or adjusting the tuner based on these hash marks that exist on the tuner itself. Uh, there's a little scale on there. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a control group. So I'm going to remove the tuner. And the way the tuner is installed is basically it's on the muzzle, it's on the threaded, uh, threaded barrel. And you essentially, you know, just thread it on just like any sort of device, muzzle device. But what's on this muzzle device is basically you have the inner sleeve which threads on, but then there's the outer weight which is threaded onto that sleeve. And therefore, once you lock the sleeve in place, then you're just threading the, you're adjusting the weight on, on the outside. Um, but I'm gonna create a control group, I'm gonna remove it. I have these spacers here, they're necessary to shim it because there's such a relief cut there that I need to get thread engagement for the, uh, the tuner. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shoot, shoot a control group without, I don't need the, the thread protector, but I'm going to shoot a, a control group. Plus I'm going to get the barrel warmed up a little bit because it is a cold gun right now, cold barrel. But I'm going to shoot a control group or warm up the barrel and shoot a control group on my target, my test target. And then, uh, then we'll start tuning. So I just shot a control group, or a couple, con a few control groups, and what sucks is the first group I shot four, actually looks like it shot pretty tight, but then the next two individual two shot groups were pretty wild. So I'm not sure if it's me in this stupid bag that I'm using, but uh, it could always be my bag manipulation that's causing issues. Um, grab my other bag here. You know, shooting groups would be a lot better if you could eliminate the human error, which is usually the case with most uh, 
with most uh, group tests, it's going to be the human error. This should be better. All right. I'm going to shoot one. I'm going to shoot one more control group on my target, and then uh, we'll go from there. Actually, we'll just shoot two more control groups. Just two, sh two, two shot groups. And if I can get this magazine in here, we'll call it. Oh, get in there. Wow, I don't know what's, if it's this is me or the gun, but. Okay, let's go ahead and start the tuning. So right now we're averaging about, I would say, we had one, one uh, errant shot here that threw off this whole thing, but I think we're right around 11, 10 or so. Yeah, let me just start a new series. Series 17. Let's go and get the the uh, tuner threaded on. Basically, you snug it up, as you can see here. You basically snug it up here, hand tighten it, guns unloaded. Then use your uh, use any other muzzle device like your. Uh, your thread protector or even a muzzle brake to secure it as well. And now it's locked into the gun. And then now we have the tuner on. The tuner is set a little bit lower than flush because uh, the face of the tuner or the face of the tuner weight and then the face of the actual inner sleeve, uh, I'm a little bit lower uh, than the face of the sleeve with the face of the outer weight because that's where they usually say you start. You can do it flush, but I'm a little bit lower than flush right now. Done. So one thing this tuner is missing is there's no real, you have these markings, hash marks in the outer weight, but there's no, no reference point. So, to, you know, to line up the hashes, so you don't know where you're really moving. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little, I'm going to use a black sharp because this is all I could find in my Jeep. I'm going to make an index mark around top dead center. It doesn't really matter, but uh, an index mark on the top of the barrel. And actually it, it's going to be moving a little bit. So make this a little longer. So I at least have a reference point by which we can reverse our adjustments. So if I can get my magazine in here, we'll start. Okay, that's a two shot group. Next, you're supposed to loosen the set screw up, which is what keeps the, the weight in there. And I'm not sure if they use standard or metric. I wish everyone switched to metric for their screws, but that's just me. Nope, it might actually be metric. Uh, what is this? No, it's not. It's 3.30 seconds, so it is standard. Okay. Let's go ahead and loosen the set screw here. And I'm right up against my lab radar. Actually, do I have a single... So we're going to go ahead and move it. They said uh, two, so they're, 
the hash marks goes, they're individual 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So they said move two hash marks. So I'm going to go two hash marks in roughly and then keep going from there. So you keep, you adjusting it by two hash marks and then, uh, then you just keep shooting groups or shooting two shot test groups. And my glasses just fogged up. That one got worse. So we're going to keep moving. And I should probably load a magazine here. Let me load up. Let's try to do a run through these targets for you. Hopefully you can follow along. Um, it's a wide angle lens, so maybe it's not gonna come out on camera as well as it could, but let me go and adjust this to level this out. So here's the test target, sorry, the like the yeah, testing target. And so the top line here is the control group without the, without the tuner. And so it's actually shooting pretty good. That's two shots, two shots, then it starts to open up for, I don't know, that could be me, or it could be the ammo, two shots, two shots, two shots. So it's kind of inconsistent. So we start walking through it and this is where we started off with. Then we went two ticks, I guess, threading, you know, threading into the barrel. So it opened up, then it tightened down, two ticks, then two ticks, it stayed relatively tight, then two ticks, it starts to open up, two more ticks, it opens up, two more ticks, it closes back down and it stays closed as you keep incrementing two ticks. And then it stays closed here, then opens up here. And so you figure this is good, this is good, this is okay, okay, and this is good. So you would figure that this, you know, arbitrary eight through 18, those tick marks where I had it indexed, might be a pretty good range to work with. And so I started working around 12 and 13, and it seems very inconsistent. So this is where we start, start messing around with uh, tuning the node. Supposedly, this is the node. And I think this was 12, and I went 13, then I went to, uh, sorry, 14, 13, 12, and I stuck with 13. And it seems sort of inconsistent and wild. Now, this is a playing around with it a little bit more, but still jumping around. But I settled on 13 after this. And if you look at these targets, sorry, that, I thought this was mine. This, this was 13, that's a three shot group. 13 being that tick mark or the hash mark I was at. 13, that was a five shot group with one off to the right. That's a three shot group. And then we shot this nice five shot group except for this, this deal here. This, this just went down low for no reason whatsoever. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm seeing the results right now with the tuner. The tuner definitely shows these fine details on these nodes, right? If you assume that I, if you assume that me being the shooter is holding the gun correctly, that, I mean, there is a node, there is, there is nodes and there's fine details on when it starts to open up and starts to close back down again. But once I settled on where I think it's supposed to be closed down again, it doesn't seem to stay shoot consistent. I even tried this eight and nine and 10. I think this was eight. This is eight and eight and nine, and it wasn't really staying close, so staying tight rather. And so I figure this, I've, I like this, I like this 
node here, 8 to 18, I can settle for that. I mean, at 50 yards, this is decent enough for me. I mean, it doesn't, we all want one whole groups, but I'm working with the ammo lot that I have here. And if I can, if this is as tight as it's going to shoot, then I'll deal with, I'll live with that. But I want that to be repeatable and it does not seem if it's repeatable for me as a shooter. Um, again, it just could be, could be me, but I did like this final group, except what the heck happened here? Like, why did I, why did I throw this shot here? This is excellent. I, I really like this right here. That would, that was, that's great. But, I don't know. Uh, they say you can't tune, you can't tune garbage to begin with, right? Garbage is garbage regardless. And is Ely Club ammo garbage? No, I'm not saying that, it's garbage. But, I'm trying to tune, maybe the gun just, maybe my gun doesn't like it because there, maybe there's flyers built into it. Or these are just accept, these are just gonna be those flyers you're gonna have to accept and your tuner cannot tune a flyer, right? Uh, that's just the way, you, what you're gonna have to live with uh, because there's that inconsistency or that quality control in the ammo. So that being said, uh, is the tuner working? I don't know, I would say it's inconclusive. I, let me take that back. I feel like we are getting what appears to be fine details where the nodes, where the, where the groups tighten up and open up, tighten up and open up relatively on a consistent basis. But whether or not, whether or not we're, we're getting true consistency across a range, across a small sampling in order to really gauge whether or not where I have it set at is tight enough or is like the best thing, I don't know. Is the tuners giving me the best, giving me optimal results or improved results rather it's really I, I don't know i'm still debating that in my head but this is what we have for today um maybe next time around when i have like when we have more time and i have more motivation to do it we'll try other lots of ammo um like sk rifle match and sk long range match that i have lots of at home but anyway that's that's gonna it i think i'm i'm gonna leave it at this right now and we'll reapproach this again in a later date. Um, but it's something to play with right now. I, I, am, I am interested in, in messing around with this tuner. All done shooting this morning. Uh, took care of what I wanted to do with regard to trying out this new tuner that I got, the adaptive tuning system from Kinetic Security Group, or Kinetic Security Solutions, I believe. Either way, it's called the adaptive tuning system. Got it on the CZ455. And as I mentioned earlier, the results are sort of inconclusive. The tuner, the tuners are designed such that you can tune, you know, the ammo such that it groups a little bit better and more consistent. From what I'm seeing, it sort of works for me, but I'm not entirely sure if the flyers in this ammo, this Ely, Ely Club ammo, you know, is just still affecting it. And, you can't tune out flyers, right? There, you know, well, you can and you can't, and you sort of can't. I mean, there's there's QC involved in a lot of this ammo, and that's why, you know, that's why there's grades, right? You have like Lapua Exact, Midas Plus, Center X. You have like SK Rifle Match and Standard. Um, there's lower tiers of ammo, and in between, Ely is the same. You got the Ely 10X, Ely Match, um, Ely Team. There's a, it goes down. Now the question is how much, how much can you tune the flyers, and like what certain flyers, whether it's bad priming comp, inconsistent priming compound, ins inconsistent powder charges, maybe there's a bullet deformity. Who knows? Um, you can't tune all that stuff out, but you can tune the harmonics of your barrel such that your, the ammo in that gun sort of responds better. It just in general over over a large sampling i'm seeing that it does the tuner does help a little bit in finding those nodes at least with this ev club but whether or not once i find that node is it staying tight and if it's not staying tight is it because the tuner's not working or is it because the ammo has flyers in it i don't know i'm assuming the latter um but anyway, I, this is just an initial test so far. I'm going to try with SK Rifle Match because I have some SK Rifle Match that shoots a little bit, a little bit better than the club. Um, but I don't have the same flyers, I don't think. So maybe it'll have a better result with Rifle Match as opposed to club. But we'll see. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, 
I want to come out sometime because as I mentioned in my last vlog, I really want to shoot some center fire with that new tripod that I have, my TVC 22i. So hopefully I can try that maybe in the next couple of weeks, get up on the, on the center fire range and uh, just sort of run drills off the tripod using a 308 to get some, get some more recoil on it as opposed to my six creed more, which has very little recoil. Um, other than that, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and pack up this, what little gear I brought today and get out of here and run a few errands. Uh, on this Saturday. Anyway, that's it for today, Saturday, April 2nd, here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. See you in the next vlog.